Hi everybody. Uh, the topic of this presentation is deep residual learning for image recognition. My name is Kai Minghee and this work is joined with uh, Xiang Yuzhang, Shao Qingren, uh, Jian Sun, and this work was done at Microsoft Research Asia. So uh, these are the results of ResNet in last year's ImageNet and MS Coco competitions and basically we won all the five main tracks including ImageNet classification, detection, localization, and Coco detection and segmentation. So for four of these tasks, we are better than the second place winner by a large margin. And in the last few years, we are witnessing a revolution of depth and the ImageNet dataset is a good benchmark of this revolution. So in the first year, uh, in the first two years of this ImageNet challenge, uh, those methods are not considered as deep and they are based on handcrafted features such as sieve or hawk and SVM classifiers. So in the famous 2012, uh, the first deep learning method for this uh, data set had been introduced and significantly reduced the error rates by about, for example, 10%. And in the following few years, we are witnessing uh, the increasing of depths. And in last year, we significantly increased the uh, number of layers to over 150 layers. So, uh, deep neural networks are also the engine of many visual recognition tasks. For example, here are the results on the uh, Pascal VOC object detection dataset. And before the prevalence of deep neural networks, uh, the most successful methods such as deep DPM on top of hog features has the results of about 34% uh, MAP on this dataset. And with the introduction of the AlexNet and the RCM method, uh, the MAP has been significantly improved by about 20%. And in last year, when we introduced the deep residual network, we have witnessed an, another about 30% uh, increase in this data set. So here is how deep learning looked like uh, three or four years ago, and this is the AlexNet that has eight, eight, eight layers. So here is how deep learning looked like uh, two years ago, and these are the Google Net and GoogleNet that has about 20 layers. And here is the deep residual network that has over 150 layers, and here is another view of this neural network. And it is not too special, it is just a lot of layers. So uh, here comes the question, uh, is learning better networks as simple as stacking more layers? And actually, I hope the answer is yes. And if so, we can just use more powerful GPU and more data, and we can have better and better uh, performance. But unfortunately, the answer is negative. So here are some results of the plane network which simply stack 3x3 uh, three three convolutional layers. And uh, here are the results on the Silver 10 dataset and the XXO is the number of iter training iterations and the YXO is the error rate. So here the yellow lines are the results of a shallower 20 layer neural network and the red line is a 50 layer uh, deeper counterpart. So somehow surprisingly we can see that the training error is higher for the deeper model and also the testing error is higher. And we found that this is a general phenomenon observed in many data sets. For example, uh, on the Cyber 10 data set, when we increase the layer from 20 to 56, we see the training error is higher and higher. And on the ImageNet data set, we found that a deeper 34 layer neural network is worse than its 18 layer counterpart. But we argue that this is a counterintuitive uh, experimental phenomenon. Let's consider a shallow model that has, for example, 18 layers and its deeper counterpart that has, for example, 34 layers. So the deeper model actually has a richer solution space and it should not have higher training error. Now let's consider a solution by construction. And uh, given a trained shallower model, we can simply copy all the layers from this model and then for the extra layers that are unique to the deeper model, and we can simply set them as identity. So the existence of this solution indicates that a deeper model should at least have the same training area as a shallower model. So the experimental phenomena indicate that there might be some optimization difficulties in uh, training this network. And the current solvers such as SGD or backpropagation cannot simply find a solution when the network is going deeper. So this motivates us to propose a framework of deep residual learning. Now let's consider a deep plane network. So, uh, we, can, uh, we, denote, we, we use HX to denote uh, desired mapping uh, to be fit by any two uh, stack layers in a plane network. So in our residual network, instead of hoping there uh, any two layers to fit this function HX, instead we hope them to fit another function which is denoted as F, Fx. 
And then we let the output hx to be the summation of fx and the input x. So this could be simply realized by an identity shortcut connection that connects the input to the output of this uh, residual block. So here we call the function fx as a residual mapping with respect to identity. So our hypothesis is that if the identity were optimal, then it could be easier to set the weight at zero. And on the other hand, if the optimal mapping is very close to identity, then it could be easier to find some small fluctuations in addition to uh, identity. So uh, with this design in mind, we still need to uh, design our neural network. And in our paper, the network design is very simple. We follow the philosophy of the uh, VGG networks. And in our baseline models, basically all the uh, convolutional layers are three by three layers. And each time we reduce the spatial size, we increase the number of filters by two. So by doing so, uh, the time complexity of each layer is roughly the same. So this design is very simple. We just want to go deeper. And we construct a plane network in this way, and then we can simply uh, uh, turn it into a REST net by adding uh, identity shortcut connections. So here are the results on the Silverton dataset. On the left-hand side are the results of plane networks. Uh, when the depth increases from 20 to 56, we can see the training error and the testing error both increase. So on the right-hand side are the results of REST net. And we can see that when the depth is increased from 20 to over 100 layer, both the training error and the testing error uh, are reduced. So this phenomena is also observed on the ImageNet dataset. And we find that a 34 layer ResNet is better than its 18 layer counterpart. So all these, all these results indicate that deep residual, uh, residual network can be trained without difficulties. So here are more results on the ImageNet dataset. We show ResNet with 34 layer, 50 layer, uh, 100 layer, and over 150 layer. So we can see that the deeper model have lower uh, error on the ImageNet set. And we also note that even our deepest model that have over 150 layer has lower time complexity than the popular VGG model. So our hypothesis is that if a deeper model is more expre expressive than its shallow counterpart, then we can use fewer number of filters to achieve good results. And if so, uh, we can significantly reduce the, the time complexity. And so ResNets are not just good image classifiers. And they are also uh, very useful feature extractors and that can be used by many other visual recognition tasks. So here are the results in last year's uh, ImageNet localization detection and COCO detection and segmentation tasks. Our methods are better than the second place winner by large margins. And all these results are obtained based on the ResNet uh, 101 features. And these results indicate that our features are well transferable. So here is a brief introduction uh, to our object detection system. And it is simply a faster RCN system uh, plus uh, the ResNet features. And we found that if we simply replace the VGG16 with the ResNet101, we have a relative gain of 28% on this data set, which is a very large gain. So here is one of our results uh, on the MS Coco data set. Our method can detect many objects in, in, in this image. And here is one example on a video. So uh, this is a generic object detector trained on the MS Coco dataset. So uh, this detector actually has 80 object categories, not just limited to cars or person. So uh, here we show the result of frame by frame detection and there is no temporal processing here. So we can see that uh, the detector can detect cars, trucks, uh, bus, person, bicycle, traffic lines, and etc. So in addition, now the ResNet are leading on many benchmarks in addition to ImageNet and MS Coco. Now the methods are the best performers on the Pascal VOC dataset. And yesterday I just learned that almost all the winners in the visual question answering challenge use kinds of ResNet. And ResNet are also the leading methods for human pose estimation, uh, depth estimation, uh, seg segment proposal, and etc. And ResNets are even more uh, powerful, uh, more potential uh, uh, beyond visual recognition. So uh, ResNets uh, have been used for uh, image generation, 
and even uh, natural language processing, speech recognition, and computational advertising. So uh, the central idea of ResNet is just going deeper. So uh, because the power of deep learning and I believe the application of ResNet uh, should be uh, very wide. So uh, in conclusion, uh, we have proposed deep residual networks, which are very easy to train, and they can simply gain accuracy by uh, from going deeper. And more importantly, these deep residual networks are, are very good features, which are well transferable to many other uh, uh, recognition tasks. So uh, after uh, our original paper, we have some follow up. Now we can train uh, 200 layers on on ImageNet and 1,000 layer ResNet on Cifa. And finally, uh, we have released our pre-trained model on ImageNet based on CAFE and uh, Facebook AI Research have also released their training code of ResNet based on Torch. So there are many other uh, third-party implementations available. And that's all. Thank you for your attention. So thank you very much for the great talk. Um, so I have to ask, do you think we're going to have million layer deep networks by next CVPR? So, uh, I don't think so. So, uh, so in my understanding, so uh, depth is just one dimension of designing your network and there are many other dimensions. So in theory, going deeper should be better, at least in terms of the training loss. But uh, it, it might not be the most economical way, for example, uh, if you want to fix your uh, computational cost. So sometimes going deeper uh, is more reasonable than, uh, sometimes going wider is more reasonable than going deeper. So in my understanding, uh, our, uh, our method just allows you to uh, train deeper neural network, but you still have to explore the rich solution space of uh, network design.